I was making a fight, a drag out punch in war, just leave. But if you change a family, if you change one person out of the family, was it worth it? Absolutely. My conclusion is that when we trust in God fully with every part of our being, he will protect us. There was no bitterness in Daniel at the changes of leadership in the kingdom, yet him following God always placed him in a position to be noticed and favored by all of the things. You ever think about it? Like, when you have a new person in, in charge and work, you ever had a boss you didn't like working for? You ever had somebody that you don't really respect? Maybe you don't respect how long they've been with the company and how they're there. Maybe you don't respect their level of knowledge about a particular job. And it's easy to get frustrated with that. But remember what I said. God places over these things whoever he chooses. It's his choice, not ours. And so I think if we, if we can truly listen to that and believe that, knowing that it is in the word, that we stop thinking about it, we stop caring about it, we stop. Because it's going to happen according to his rule anyways. His will is going to depict everything that goes on from that second forward, as it has up to that second to begin with. Okay? Daniel also didn't let any of this go to his head or boost his ego. He could have easily became that guy. Ha! I'm glad they took me out of Judah because now I got some power. These people about me. Never became that guy. Never. He just kept worshiping and honoring his God each and every day. Realizing, of course, that he was God's servant. And that's the heart that he had in everything that he did. There are many things that God can teach us from the life of Daniel. And he's working on me heavily through it. So uh, I can't tell you where God's going to put me any Saturday for a message. I was talking to, talking to Liv. And Liv has told me on several occasions that he had a message prepared. And God decided that wasn't the one he was going with. Right? God has a way of doing that. So... I can't tell you where it's going to go, but I can tell you that if you read read this book, read the book of Daniel, because as you very well know, this isn't the end of Daniel, right? So that's I think that's why Daniel stood out to me as somebody I wanted to learn more about. And as I did, that's where messages started flowing from. Remember this in your journey, and this is one that hit me hard this afternoon. Romans chapter 2, verses 6 through 8. God will repay each person according to what they have done. Seven, to those who uh, who practice persistence in doing uh, good, seek glory, honor, and immortality, he will give eternal life. But for those who are self-seeking and who reject the truth and follow evil, there will be wrath and anger. When we are called, and we are all called at some point to give like, an account for how we lived our lives, for what we did in this life, we all have to answer for it. And for, for whoever practices persistence, who goes out and seeks good and seeks glory and honors him by sharing him with other people, those are the people that are going to find immortality, eternal life. But the ones who are self-searching, self-seeking, only worrying about themselves, in the end, you're going to be rewarded for that, and the reward is not good. It is not prosperous. In fact, the reward is hell. So keep those things in mind. We have an opportunity. By the very fact that we're here tonight, breathing, living, witnessing, exam we're, we're examples of the fact that God is not done with us. And so if you've not made a choice to follow him, you can still do that right now tonight. Have you lost your faith along the way to something that happened in your life? Something happened to you that Maybe you thought you were there. You thought you had it. But something happened and you gave up on it. You were like, I asked God to show up and he did it. And so I'm done. You know, we were reading earlier in Daniel. We were talking about these, these men that were about to be thrown into this fiery furnace. And they had told King Nebuchadnezzar at that time, my God can deliver me from your hand. But even if he doesn't, right, even if he doesn't, we will still follow him. Because they knew that even after death, they knew exactly where they were going. They had no fear. But they would not bow to anybody that was not God because they were not God. 
That's who they serve. That was it. And so Nebuchadnezzar responds, the men are thrown into the fire furnace, but they weren't hurt. Nebuchadnezzar looks into the furnace and he's, he's perplexed. There are four figures running around this fire. Didn't we throw three men in there? Yeah. Well, there's four in there now. And one looks like, looks like he could be with the gods. <laughs> Pull them all out, orders them to come out, and they're not hurt. They're not burned, they're not singed, they don't smell like smoke. They're not sweaty from the heat. They're fine. Walk right out of there. God's answer to us is not always what we want it to be. A lot of people lose their faith because somebody they prayed for died. A bad situation, maybe it was a car accident, maybe it was cancer, maybe it was whatever it was. And we prayed and we meant it with the very core of our being. We prayed from the bottom of our hearts, Lord, please save them. But for whatever reason, they didn't make it. The best thing that we can do, because I'll tell you right now, I can't explain that to you. God has not put me in a position where I'm supposed to intercede for him. But I will tell you that God makes all those choices, and his choices are always perfect. And they don't have to make sense to us for him to still be God and for his choices to still be perfect. But we have to remember from chapter 3, even if he doesn't, the best thing you can do in your lifetime, while people are healthy and fine, and in your company, is share God with them. Because the best thing is that they have a relationship with him. Because now, if they make the choice to follow him based on you sharing your witness, your testimony with them about why you believe and why you have joy of being a follower of Christ, and that changes them, even if they don't make it, you know where they are. There's no doubt in your mind. You saved them. You, you led them to the cross, and Jesus saved them. And now even if they don't make it, you're going to see them again. Isn't that awesome? We don't always understand the decisions that God makes, and he does not owe us an explanation. And some people get caught up in that. Answer me, why did you do this? But God owes you no explanation. He doesn't owe me one either. So if you've lost faith, know that God has not given up on you. He still loves you. He's still very much so after you. Are you wanting to make a decision for the very first time tonight? And if so, even if you're not physically here, please text on the line if that's up right now. You can do that. You can text on the comments underneath that. You can actually send an email to me if you want to, and that's by Kyle at gmail.com, B-Y-K-O-T-A-K-Y-L-E. And we can, we can tell you how to do that, or maybe we can pray on the phone and do that together. Yeah, that's, with all the social opportunities we have at our fingertips, we need to open that up. And so, if you're making a decision tonight, or you just want to restore that faith, if God has restored faith in your heart for Him, won't you come tonight and just acknowledge you? I invite you to come.